So today's lesson is 1.3 over quadratic equations. And you can see our objectives listed. This is a formal definition of quadratic equations. Um, you can read this for yourself. It talks about tools for solving quadratic equations. Um, and the four tools we're going to use uh, today are factoring, square root method, completing the square, and quadratic formula. So we have several factor, factoring strategies. The ones that we're going to focus on today is first, we're going to arrange the terms in descending powers, um, if that's not already the way the problem is written. And then second, we're going to factor out any greatest common factors that we can go ahead and remove from each term. And then third, we are going to factor based off of what type of problem we see. If it's a two term binomial, then it is a special formula called the difference of squares. And then if it's a three term trinomial, um, we're going to take the leading coefficient um, and the last term and the middle term. And we're going to figure out what we need to do. Um, and we may use the AC method. So let's talk about the AC method. So this is an example of the AC method. Um, the first thing is to make sure that you understand all of the parts. In this example, A is equal to 6, B is equal to 1, and C is equal to negative 1. Um, for the AC method, you're multiplying the A value and the C value. So 6 times negative 1 will give me negative 6. And now when we're looking at this, we're trying to find uh, factors of AC, so negative 6, that when we add them, they give us uh, 1, which is our B. And so in this case, that's negative 2 and 3. When we do that, we can rewrite the problem with B rewritten as those factors added together. And then we can use factoring by grouping. So let's take a look at this example here. We have 4 times negative 5 because our 4 is our A and negative 5 is our C. Uh, it's already in descending order here. So 4 times negative 5 gives me negative 20. So this is my AC. And I know that I need to add the factors that give me 20 um, to give me 19. Right, so we're multiplying and then adding. So when we look at 20, um, the factors that could give negative 20 means one factor is going to have a negative sign and one factor is going to have a positive sign because it's negative, so the signs can't match. So if we're looking here, if you think about what can I multiply negative 20 to get negative 20 but add to get 19. So here, if you think about it, um, the first set of factors for 20 are 20 and 1. So if you want 19 to be positive, then when you're multiplying this, you need the 1 to be negative. So when you add it together, 20 plus negative 1, it gives you positive 19. So in this case, we can rewrite this as 4x squared plus 20x minus x because when we have a negative 1 we can just write the minus sign we don't have to write the 1 minus 5 so then we can factor by grouping when we factor by grouping we divide um, right in the middle and we see okay what can I factor out on the left side so I'm looking for a greatest common factor for the left side we see that we have 4 and 20 and there's an x in both terms so if I factor out a 4x then the first term becomes x because 4x squared divided by 4x gives me x plus 20x divided by 4x leaves me with a 5. So one of the goals when we're trying to factor here is we want to get this term twice because then we can factor it out to the very front and have those two terms, these portions here that are left over to be one factor. So if we look back at this, this has negative x minus 5. Well, I want x plus 5. So if I pull out a negative 1 here, I can get x plus 5. So when we do that here, 
I now have those terms that match the x plus 5 and I have 4x minus 1 left over. So when I pull that x plus 5 to the front as one term, then I'm left with 4x minus 1. And so that is our factored form of 4x squared minus 19x minus 5 using the AC method. Now I'm going to let you work example 4 and you can look at the annotated notes that are posted on Blackboard to make sure that you worked it correctly. I will go ahead and um, give you a head start. I would start by factoring out an x to the very front here to get us to 9x squared minus 21x plus 10. So then this x on the side is just going to keep going the whole problem and you're going to factor this one using the AC method just like we did on example 3. So these are examples of special factors. So our factors here are x squared minus 25, 3x squared minus 49, and factors 16x squared minus 8. So this is a difference of squared. So the general form for a difference of squared is that you have um, a squared minus b squared, which factors to a plus b times a minus b. So that's the general form. So if we take a look at these, over here, we have an x squared, so x must be our a, and then we have a 25. So we need to take the square root of 25. The square root of 25 is 5. So this will factor to x plus 5 times x minus 5. That's going to work for each one of these examples because they're all difference of squares. We have 36x squared, so we know we're going to have an x because the square root of x squared is x. And then we need to think about the square root of 36. Well, the square root of 36 is 6. So we have 6x. And then we take the square root of 49. The square root of 49 is 7. So plus 7 times 6x minus 7. And I'll let y'all do the last one. And again, you can check these using your... Um, annotated notes that are posted in Blackboard. So if we take a look at a few more here, um, you should kind of have this down, but what I want you to realize is these are not perfect squares, right? 24 and 54, not perfect squares. So to try to figure out where we need to go from here, we need to factor out what 24 and 54 have in common. So 24 and 54 are both divisible by 6. So if I pull a 6 to the front, then 24 divided by 6 gives me um, a 4x squared minus 54 divided by 6 gives me a 9. So now I have perfect squares for the 4x squared and the minus 9. So I'm just going to carry that 6 down. 4x squared, the square root of that is 2x. The square root of 9 is 3. And so then we have the same formula for our factoring here. Same thing on this one here. We have this leading negative. If I factor out the negative 5 on this first term, then that gives me x squared. When I pull a negative 5 from 20, that gives me minus 4. And now we have perfect squares again. So this one's going to factor to negative 5 times x plus 2 times x minus 2. And again, you can try number 6 on your own. For some reason I have this slide duplicated so um, we're going to just move on from here um, and look at the next slide. All right, solving by factoring uh, when possible. So 
If you get zero on one side, you can factor the non-zero side and then set each factor equal to zero because we know at least one of them has to be equal to zero because that's the only way we can get a zero. And then um, we can solve, solve those two factors set equal to zero. So here they started it for us. We have our quadratic set equal to zero. They went ahead and factored for us. And now we need to set each factor equal to zero and solve each one. So on this first one, I'm gonna subtract one from both sides and I get five X equals negative one. And then if I divide by five on both sides, I get, I'm gonna write my answer here, X equal to negative one fifth. On this one here, I can add one to both sides and I get X equals one. So in this case, X is equal to negative one fifth and one. So let's go on. All right, so let's look at these examples here. So on this first one, we have x squared plus 7x minus 12. Since our minus 12, our c value is on the right hand side, we want to move it over to the left hand side so that we can get a zero on the right hand side. So I'm going to add 12 to both sides. So we get x squared plus 7x plus 12 equals zero. Now we can factor. Um, you can use the AC method here, but your A is one. So you're just thinking of things that when you multiply them together, you get 12, but when you add them together, you get seven. So when we think about that, we know they both have to be positive because we only have positive here. So we're gonna have X, X plus plus on our terms to begin with. So then factors of 12 that add up to seven are three and four. So we can say X plus three equals zero and X plus four equals zero. If I subtract three from both sides, cancels on the left-hand side and I get negative three on the right-hand side. If I subtract four from both sides, I get X on the left-hand side and negative four on the right-hand side. So X can be equal to negative four and negative three. All right, so here, this one has two negatives. We know to get a negative when you multiply, so we're multiplying to get this term. To get a negative when you multiply, you have to have different signs. So one of our factors has to have a plus and one of them has to have a minus. So if you think about it that way, you think about how you need to subtract to get this minus four X here. So when we factor here, we know we're gonna have X plus some value and X minus some value because that's the only way to get a negative for the third term here, the C. So when we do that, I'm thinking, okay, what are factors of 12 that when I subtract them, I get a four. So if I think that through, six minus two would give me four. So to know which one is negative and which one is positive, you're looking at this here. Since this is negative, the bigger factor has to be negative and the smaller factor is the positive. So that when you get to that step, when you would FOIL, you would get a subtraction there. So then we have X plus two equal to zero and X minus six equal to zero. So we subtract two from both sides. We get X equal negative two. We add six to both sides and we get X equal positive six. So X could be equal to negative two or positive six. So let's try a couple more where we um, might have some common factors or need to think about the AC method in our factoring. So if we have four R squared plus 17 R minus five here, um, we're doing the same thing. We're thinking about things that when you multiply four and 15, you can factor and so on. That's one way to do it with the AC method. 
or you can just logically work through it. So the way I do these is I think about, okay, I know I have to have two factors here. I have 4r squared and I have minus 15. If I think about factors of 4 and factors of 15 here, the most common factor of 15 I think of is 3 times 5, right? And so if I'm using 3 times 5 here, one of them has to be multiplied by 4 to get up to 17. So if I say, okay, this is 4r and this is r. That will give me this first term. <coughs> Excuse me. For the second term, one of them has to be negative and one of them has to be positive because, again, this has a negative on the third term. So if I have my negative with the 4r and I put my 5 right here and my 3 right here, when I multiply 4 times 5, I get 20. And negative 3 times r gives me negative 3. So um, 20r minus negative 3r will give me that positive 17r. So then you set both equal to 0. And you solve. If I subtract 3 on the left one, or add 3 on the left one, this is what I get. And if I divide by 4 here, I get r equals 3 fourths. If I subtract 5 here, I get r equals negative 5. So r could be negative 5 or 3 fourths. On this one here, we need to get 0 on the right hand side, so I'm going to subtract negative 32 or subtract 32w from both sides. So I get 4w squared minus 32w equals 0. Now, I see here that I can pull out a greatest common factor. My greatest common factor here would be 4w. So the first term is simply w, and the second term becomes minus 8. So then we set both equal to 0. And we get w equals 0, because 0 divided by 4 will still be 0 and then w equal to 8, and then we add 8 to both sides. So w could be 0 or 8. So the next method we're going to talk about is solving by the square root method. So if we get a constant number on one side, um, and we have a square on the other side, there's just two terms, uh, then we can use the square root method. And so um, we're going to take a look at these examples here. If I have 4x squared equals 8, then I can divide by 4, and I get x squared equals 2. And then when I take the square root of both sides, what happens is the x squared becomes x, and anytime you take a square root, you have two possible answers, a positive answer and a negative answer. So we're going to have plus or minus, and the square root of 2 is not uh, factorable any further, so we're just going to have the square root of 2. So here on the second one, if we divide by 5 to start with, we get x squared equals negative 4. And we worked on uh, when we take the square root of both sides, what happens when you have a negative. So we learned that on 1.2. So from 1.2, we know that this will be x equals plus or minus 2i. So we can try a couple more of those. Um, this is the same type of problem, it's just we don't have the constant on the right hand side. So we can go ahead and move that um, by adding 48 to both sides. So then we have 4x squared equals 48. We divide both sides by 4 to give us x squared equals 12. And then we take the square root of both sides. So 12, when we take the square root here, we need to think about factoring, and I use a factor tree here. So 
we want to get it into its simplest form of just prime numbers. It's called a prime factorization. So if I divide 12 by 2, I get 6. And then divide by 2 here, we get 3. And you have to remember with a prime factorization, we have 2 times 2 times 3 because those are our prime numbers. With a prime factorization, when you take the square root out, you have to have pairs to come out, and only one comes out. And then if you have singles left in, they have to stay in the house. So we have 2 square root of 3. So a lot of students like to think of this as like date night. If you have somebody to go on a date with, you go out as a couple. So you're representing one together. And then if you don't have a date, you have to stay home inside the house. So we can try this one as well. I'm going to subtract 21 from both sides. And we get 3x squared equals negative 21. If we divide by 3, we get x squared equals negative 7. 7 is our ready prime. So when we take the square root of both sides here, and we get x equal to plus or minus, the 7 doesn't have anywhere to go. But we can get rid of that negative by pulling out an i. So we end up with plus or minus i square root of 7. Okay, so for this next example, this looks a little more complex, but if you think about it in the way that you need something squared equal to a constant, um, this x minus 1 is something squared. So we subtract 24 from both sides here. And we get 3x minus 1 squared equals negative 24. And then divide by 3 on both sides. So we have x minus 1 squared equals negative. When we divide 24 by 3, we get 8. So then we can take the square root of both sides because we have everything squared on the left-hand side. So we're left with x minus 1 equal to 8, if you think about 8 with a factor tree, you have 2 and 4 and 2 and 2. So we have 2 times 2 times 2. So if we pull out a pair, we have 1, 2 on the outside and 1 single 2 who has to hang out on the inside. And we can't forget that this has a negative here. So we have an i and our plus or minus from any time we take the square root. So then when we add 1 to both sides here to get x by itself, it's important to put that 1 in front of the plus or minus 2i squared here so that we understand that we're doing 1 plus 2i squared and 1 minus 2i squared. So this comes out to two um, terms. So if we think about it this way, x is equal to 1 minus 2i squared and 1 plus 2i squared, because again, it has two terms. So this last one here, I'm going to leave it for you to try, um, and you can check your answers on Blackboard. So we need to be able to recognize perfect squares. So the perfect squares that you're seeing here actually come in two forms, right? So the two forms, um, when you have an a x squared, uh, minus b x, uh, plus c squared, when it's that term like that, what that actually could be written as in a way that you would realize it as an a and b is you have a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. If we think about it in that form here, then when we factor, we see that it's a, take the square root of both sides, a minus b times a uh, minus b. Because with this negative right here, we need two negatives to get a positive right here because we're multiplying, remember. So that's one form. So if we think of, so all of these 
fit that form. So if we think about how these are different than that, it's just the plus, right? So if we write it as a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, then that factors to a plus b times a plus b. So with that knowledge, we can see here that if we have x squared minus 14x, well, x is our a, so we need to do, we need to divide our 14 by 2 to figure out what our c is. So 14 divided by 2 is 7, so then 7 squared is 49. So this would be plus 49 here. So this would factor to x minus 7 times x minus 7. So let's take a look at some. Um, we'll do some more of those in just a second. Let's talk about solving uh, by completing the square. So solving by completing the square is a really useful method. It's actually how mathematicians came up with the quadratic formula. So we'll work on the quadratic formula in a second. But we will go ahead and look at how that was developed based off of completing the square. So these are the steps. You can read through the steps for completing the square. I'm actually going to model them for you. So let's take a look um, at this first one. So in this first one, the first step is to make sure that this is a 1 for your a. Well, there is already a 1 here for a because we just have x squared. And we don't need to write that one. We just need to uh, realize that it's already in that form. So we don't need to do anything uh, for that first step. The second step is to take your C value and move it to the other side. So we did that here. Then you take your B here and you say, okay, I'm going to do B divided by 2 and I'm going to square it. And that's going to give you your new C. So we did 6 divided by 2 squared. Well, 6 divided by 2 is 3. 3 squared equals 9. So we added 9 to both sides. Then this factors to one of those special squares, x minus 3, x minus 3. And that's equal to 19. And then from here down, you just solve by the square root method, like we've been doing. So let's work on an example together. So I'm going to do the first one, and then I'm going to let you uh, do the second one. And again, those notes are on Blackboard for you to check your work. So for this first one here, I already have a 1 in front of my x squared, so I'm just going to move my 23 over. So I have x squared plus 10x. I know I'm going to add something here equal to negative 23. And whatever I add there, I also have to add here to keep the equation the same. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to think, all right, for my b, I have 10 divided by 2 squared. So 10 divided by 2 is 5. 5 squared is 25. So that's what I'm going to add to both sides is that 25. So once I do that, here this side will factor to x plus 5 times x plus 5. And on this side, when we combine those, we get a positive 2. So now we can rewrite x plus 5 times x plus 5 as x plus 5 squared, positive 2. Take the square root of both sides. And we get x plus 5 equals plus or minus the square root of 2. And then subtract 5 from both sides. And we get x equals negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 2. And don't forget, those are actually two factors. That means that we have x is equal to negative 5 minus the square root of 2. And negative 5 plus the square root of 2. And you want to leave it in this form because this is an exact answer. If you put this in your calculator or something, you're going to get an estimate for the square root of 2, and it will not give you an exact answer. So I want to see it in this form, please. 
So this first one, what I want you to realize is you might think, oh, well, my C is already on the other side. It's not because that's the 12X right here. So I want to make sure that you realize you need to move that 12X over with subtraction and then start the completing the square process. So again, you can check your annotated notes for that problem after you've attempted it. So like I told you, the whole thing that completing the square le led to was the quadratic equation. So this is our quadratic equation. You need to know this for your next test. You probably just need to know it in general because you will factor a lot throughout the semester. So this is something that's helpful, especially if you don't feel comfortable with factoring because you can use this every time. It will always work no matter what, okay? So we're gonna look at some examples. So these are just some notes to help you um, realize that if you are missing a term here and you still want to use the quadratic formula, you just write that as a zero term. And so in this case, your A would be 2, your B would be 0, and your C would be negative 5. So just to make sure that you understand that you can rewrite it and make it look like a regular quadratic to use for the quadratic formula. Okay, so then we have four times our A times our C all over two times our A. So you could put that directly into a calculator or you could work it out step by step. Um, I'm gonna work it out step by step just to model it for you. So x equals negative times a negative is a positive, so we get 3 plus or minus the square root. Negative 3 squared is 9. Um, we have a negative and a negative, so we're going to end up with a plus here. 4 times 9 times 20 is 720, and I multiply that all out, over 2 times 9 is 18. So then we would add the 9 and the 720. So we would get x equals, I'm just continuing this way because I'm running out of room, 3 plus or minus the square root of 729 all over 18. So when we do that, we realize that the square root of 729 is 27. If you didn't realize that, you can always do a factor tree, right? So if I come over here and do a factor tree, 729, it ends in a 9, so it's divisible by 3 for sure. So we get 243. Uh, that's also divisible by 3 because it ends in a 3, so we get 81. 81, we know, is just 9 times 9. So 3 times 3 and 3 times 3. So if we write that out, we have 1... 3, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 threes. And if we're taking the square root, we pull pairs out. So we have one pair, two pair, three pair. So that's just going to be 3 times 3 times 3. Well, 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27. So when we go to this next step, we get 
x equals 3 plus or minus 27 over 18. And so um, that can actually simplify, right? All of those are divisible by 3, so we get x is equal to 1 plus or minus 9 divided by 9. But remember, that's two factors. So I'm going to come up here and think about that. That means x is equal to 1 plus 9 over 9, and x is equal to 1 minus 9 over 9. Well, I can go ahead and figure those out. That gives me 10 over 9 and negative 8 over 9. So that's our final answer. So let's try this one together and then the last one I'll let you work on your own. So for this one here, my A is 2, my B is negative 6, and my C is 1. So I get X, let me move it up a little so I have more space. I get X equal to negative negative 6 plus or minus the square root of negative 6 squared minus 4 times 2 times 1 all over 2 times 2. So x equals 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 minus 8 all over 4. So x is equal to 6 plus or minus the square root of 28 over 4. Well, 28, I can do a factor tree for 28. I know that's 4 and 7, and 4 is 2 and 2. So I get 2 times 2 times 7, square root. So the pair of 2's come out, and the 7's left on the inside. So I'm going to continue right here. x equals 6 plus or minus 2 square root of 7 over 4. Well, when we do this, these 6, 2, and 4 are all divisible by 2. So we can actually reduce this further to x is equal to 3 plus or minus the square root of 7 over 2. So remember, that's two answers. 3 minus the square root of 7 over 2 and 3 plus the square root of 7 over 2. And so this one here, I want you to try on your own um, and check your answer with the annotated notes. Um, I will give you a hint. This one will give you imaginary number. So if you get an imaginary number, don't be surprised. All right. So let's look at a couple of application problems um, that go along with uh, this idea of quadratics here. So one that you may remember is the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem says if we have a right triangle, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So if we use this idea, we can solve this problem here. A rectangular park is four miles wide and two miles long. So if we have a park that is uh, four miles wide and two miles long, how far is the distance a person walks across the diagonal of the parking of the park? So if we walk this diagonal, what is this distance? This is what we want to know. So this is a right triangle because it is a uh, rectangle. So we're looking at the right triangle. Oh, let me draw my right triangle a little better. We're looking at the right triangle where we have 4, 2, and then we have our C that we don't know. So we can write this as 4 squared plus 2 squared equals C squared. So 16 plus 4 equals C squared. So then we get 20 equals C squared. And then if we look for C by taking the square root of both sides, finish right here, we get c equal to plus or minus the square root of 20. We can do our factor tree for 20. So we have two twos that we can pull to the front. So we end with c equals plus or minus 2 
square root of 5. Now, what we have to realize here is this is a distance. A distance can never be negative. So then we're looking at C is equal to 2 square root of 5 miles. And if you were asked for um, the decimal answer here, we could put it in our calculator and get the answer. So let's take a look at one more problem, an application problem, and we'll go from there. We'll be done with this lesson. So the diagonal of a TV set is 26 inches long. So if we're looking at a TV set, the diagonal is 26 inches long. Its length is 14 inches and more than the height. So 14 plus H gives me the length. So that means this is the height. Find the dimensions of the TV. So we know because we can have A squared plus B squared equals C squared. We're going to have 14 plus H squared plus H squared equals 26 squared. So if we do that, um, we can rewrite this as 14 plus h times 14 plus h plus h squared equals 26 squared is 676. If we write it like that, that mean, lets me know, okay, I need to FOIL. You cannot just distribute that two. You can't distribute a square over addition, so you need to multiply it out. So when we multiply 14 plus h times 14 plus h, so 14 times 14 gives me 196, and then 14 times h gives me 14h. 14 times h gives me 14h. And then h times h is h squared. Plus we still have this h squared. And then we have 676. So we have two h squareds. So I'm going to write those first because we want to go in descending order. And then 14h plus 14h is 28h plus 196 equals 676. Well, we can move that 676 over to make this a quadratic. And we get 2h squared plus 28h um, minus 480. When we subtract, uh, we take 196 minus 676. And so then from here, we get a, uh, we can factor two out and we get h squared plus uh, 14h minus 240 equals zero. Then we can factor that. So we get h plus 24 times h minus 10 equals zero. And so then the two won't matter here. It just factors away, right? Because two doesn't equal zero. So when we're taking this, we say h plus 24 equals zero and h minus 10 equals zero. So h equals negative 24 and h equals 10. Well, that negative 24 doesn't really make sense. So we think about it this way. If h is 10 and our length our height is 10, then our length has to be 10 plus 4, which is that 24, but it's positive because, um, because of the uh, it being a distance, right? So we get that the height is 10 inches and the length is 24 inches. And so that concludes um, 1.3.